The ordinary simple annuity formula is a way of calculating the accumulated value of a series of equal payments made at regular intervals. We use the word ordinary because in financial mathematics, that word is used whenever payments are made at the end of a period. What makes the annuity simple is that the interest compounding period corresponds to the cash flow frequency. For example, if you're paying into an account monthly, the interest would have to be compounded monthly. To understand how this formula is derived, we first must understand what it does and how it works. Suppose you decide to invest $100 each year for the next five years, starting one year from today, at an annual interest rate of 10%. You want to know how much those investments will grow to by the end of the fifth year. Here's a timeline to show this in action. The numbers along the timeline represent the years. Zero represents today, and notice that there's no dollar amount there because we plan on starting this annuity one year from today. This represents the end of year one, the end of year two, all the way to the end of year five. The ordinary simple annuity formula allows us to calculate this value almost effortlessly. Substituting 100 as PMT, 10% as a decimal into I, and 5 into N, we learn that by the end of the fifth year, your five installments will mature to $610.51, which is a gain of $110.51. Knowing how to calculate this without the formula is the key to understanding its derivation. Let's recalculate this manually as if the formula didn't exist. Focusing in on our first installment made here, we expect to accumulate compounding interest four times. The first time will be at the end of year two, in other words, a year from when it is first added to the account, again at the end of year three, again at year four, and once more at the end of year five. This totals four compounding periods. Using the future value formula for compound interest, we find that this installment matures to $146.41 by the end of year five. For the second $100 installment, which is paid at the end of year two, only three compounding periods will occur by the end of the annuity. Its future value by the end of year five is calculated using the same formula as before, except with a change in the exponent from four to three. It matures to $133.10. The same idea will be applied to the third and fourth installment as shown. Naturally, we expect these to be less since their compounding periods decrease closer to the end. The last installment, which is added at the end of year five, earns no interest since the annuity period ends at that point. Adding these values up, we get a total of $610.51, which was the same as when we used the ordinary simple annuity formula. As you can tell, using the ordinary simple annuity formula is generally easier than calculating this in chunks, which leads us to ask, how does this formula neatly encompass all these calculations? To derive this formula, let's write each FV expression as a sum represented by S. The equation is S is equal to FV1 plus FV2 plus FV3 plus FV4 plus 100. For the sake of simplicity of what I'm about to reveal to you, we will reverse the order of these terms. And note by doing this, I'm not changing the sum. Notice how each term after the first is formed by multiplying the preceding term by a constant factor. For example, the second term is formed by multiplying the preceding term of 100 by a factor of 1 plus 0 0.1. And the third term is formed by multiplying the second term again by a factor of 1 plus 0 0.1, and so on. Whenever a set of terms follows this rule, where each subsequent term is obtained by multiplying the preceding one by a constant factor, it is referred to as a geometric progression series. All geometric progression series with a finite number of terms, such as this one, their sum can be calculated using this formula. S is equal to A times R to the power of N take away one, all divided by R subtract one, where A is the initial value, R is the common ratio, and N is the total number of terms. We will explore the derivation of this formula in a separate video. In relation to our scenario, the initial value is 100, and the common ratio is 1 plus 0 0.1. Therefore, A must be 100, and R must be 1 plus 0 
Substituting these values into the formula, along with ns5, we get an equation that is identical to when we use the ordinary simple annuity formula. To generalize this further, we can replace A with PMT for the recurring payment and replace R with 1 plus I, where I is the interest rate per compounding period. When we do this, we end up producing the ordinary simple annuity formula. As you can see, by combining what we know about the future value of compound interest, annuities, and geometric progression, we have crafted a handy formula that streamlines complex calculations into something much more manageable. I hope your new understanding of annuities makes handling finances easier and empowers you to make wiser choices with your cash. Thank you for watching.